Hello, my name is MJ and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at Unconditional Parenting, Moving from Rewards and Punishments to Love and Reason by Alfie Cohn. This book has had a significant impact on me and my parenting of my own children and gave me lots of pause for thought and made me question a lot of things that I had assumed were natural devices used by parents and ask whether they're actually good for my children, especially in the long term. Alfie Cohn has another book called Punished by Rewards, and in that one, he's talking about the negative impacts of external motivation and the importance of internal motivation. And this book is something of a deep dive looking at parents and children and finding ways that we can not be using external motivators to try and cajole children into being uh, the sort of people that we want them to be. And that's a, an early premise that he works with and he asks us as the readers, what sort of children do we want? Do we want compliant children or do we want children that are good at making their own decisions and can stand up for themselves and have um, an ability to think for themselves and care about those around them. He asks and sets up a scenario where he's sat in an aeroplane and he overhears a lady turn around to a parent with a child um, in the next aisle and says, your child was so well behaved on the flight. Well done. Now, what do we mean by well behaved? Well behaved in this context means you were compliant to the rules of the grown ups, weren't you? The child hadn't shown any brilliance in terms of um, artistic thinking or uh, concern for their fellow man. No, the child had just been compliant. And a lot of what parenting tends to be or can be is about trying to have children be compliant to what the parent wants. This fits very much in line with behaviorism and the idea that you can either punish or reward to get the behavior that you want. The problem there is that it's one, it's what the parent wants, it's not necessarily what the child wants, but it's often so situated in such a short-term view of the child's development. It is, you are annoying me, I will either punish or convince you I can reward you um, with, if you can just be quiet, then I'll give you some screen time, whatever the device is, it's still the same story. One of the things I really liked in the book is he speaks about time out and it's a connection to behaviorism. So time out, it's actually a shortened version of its name. It used to be called time out from positive reinforcement. The idea is that you would be positively reinforcing a behavior. And then if the creature or the person or whatever was not doing what you wanted to do, you pull back that positive reinforcement. Now, in the context of parenting, what we talk about when we talk about positive reinforcement is, you know, love and kindness. And that's essentially what a timeout is. You are pulling back the love and kindness and you are saying, I am going to withdraw my kindness and love. You go be somewhere outside of my kindness and love until you have learnt how to behave for me. And I thought that was a really important point to make. That like at a moment where our child needs us the most, we are saying, go away from me. And you are not helping the child to become good at problem solving for the future. The child needs to learn and develop strategies for being able to overcome these obstacles. Okay, so you were feeling frustrated and you hit your sibling. Okay, let's deal with that together. This is a problem that we can solve together. And one of the things that I do now in my parenting is that I often ask my children to help me solve problems. So if I snapped at them and said, ah, oh, just go away, I'm busy. And then I catch myself and I realize, okay, I shouldn't have done that. 
And then I sit with my children and I ask them to collaboratively problem solve with me to try and find ways that, okay, maybe I should have taken a deep breath before I spoke like that. And then we work through it together. It's not just me teaching them how to behave. We work as a collaborative unit to try and find the best solution uh, to the problem. One of Alfie Cohn's other suggestions that I really like is about saying yes or no to things. And the reality for children is that they are creatures that seek out flow so much. They want to explore the world and they want to uh, have fun and get into a flow state. And what happens so often is that parents become these guardians of flow state and no, don't do that. That's going to make a mess. Well, you're, you've had kids, you kind of need to buy into the mess and allow the children to have more scope for exploration and enjoyment. So often there's a restriction of parents thinking, oh, well, I'm going to have to tidy up all of the chalk, aren't I, if we carry on playing with the chalk like this. Rather let it sit and don't say no unless you have to. Rather try and say yes more often. And I've done that now in my life with my kids. I try and say yes. I only say no if I have a valid reason for saying no or it's a mistake. Otherwise, if I'm thinking completely rationally and how I want to raise my children, I say yes. Okay, you would like to wear a bizarre outfit. You want to wear your jumper on your legs and your trousers on your arms. You know what? I don't have a good reason to tell you that you can't do that. Why don't you figure out if that's going to be a good solution or not? Allow the child an opportunity to explore and enjoy the world around them rather than trying to control them and tell them how to behave within a set strict guidelines of this is acceptable behavior. It is not appropriate to wear your jumper on your legs. Who cares? Overall, I would highly recommend this book. It gives you lots of things to think about and some really practical ways of being able to help parents to be able to do the best for their kids. If you have read Unconditional Parenting or have comments about parenting that you would like to share, please do so. I'm Keith to hear them. All right. Bye for now.